Hello class, this is section 3.1 and today we are going to discuss general solutions to second order homogeneous linear differential equations. And just a reminder as to what these words mean. Second order simply means that the highest the derivative in the equation is 2. We can see a second derivative over here in the first term. Homogeneous simply means that every term there has a y, a y prime, or a y double prime in it. And linear simply means that there is no multiplication of y's. You don't see a y squared term, you don't see a y, y prime term, and so on. These are the type of equations that we are going to focus on in this section. And let us discuss some basics as to how to figure out the general solution. First, we make the assertion that if the terms px and qx in this equation are continuous on an interval i, then the differential equation will have two linearly independent solutions in i. And generally, this is the type of equation that you'll see in the rest of this course. px and qx will always be continuous in the interval that we care about. And, we will and when this is true, we will always have two linearly independent solutions, two different solutions. Remember that two solutions are linearly independent if one cannot be a multiple, a constant multiple of the other. Our goal then, in most of this section, is to find those two linearly independent solutions. And once we do, it is actually really easy to find the general solution. If you may recall, the principle of superposition says that if y1 and y2 are two solutions to this differential equation, then c1 y1 plus c2 y2 for any constants c1 and c2 is also a solution to the equation. So remember that since this is a second order equation, we expect the general solution to have two constants and we see two constants right here. So this is a very natural candidate for the general solution. But it turns out that this expression, c1y1 plus c2y2, is only the general solution when y1 and y2 are linearly independent. So if y1, y2 are too linearly independent solutions to the equation, only then can we assert that this expression y c1 y1 plus c2 y2 is the general solution to the differential equation. So remember that the principle of superposition works regardless of whether your two solutions are linearly independent or not. But for c1 y1 plus c2 y2 to be the general solution, you do need y1 and y2 to be linearly independent. So checking linear independence is actually really easy. Again, you can just check whether the ratio of y1 over y2 is constant or not. But let me introduce another method. This method is not super useful in second order equations, but it will be useful in the future. And it's called the method of Ronskins. So this is a Ronskin. It is normally written down as w of y1 and y2. So this is a Ronskin of two solutions of a differential equation. And it's simply a determinant of a matrix. The matrix is given by a 2 by 2 matrix with the left, top left entry y1, the top right entry y2, the bottom left entry y1 prime, and the bottom right entry y2 prime. So if you take the determinant of that matrix, you get y1 x y2 prime x minus y1 prime x y2 x. So this Ronskin allows us to determine linear independence by this rule. The Ronskin of two solutions is linearly is zero only when y1 and y2 are linearly dependent. So if y1 and y2 are linearly independent, the Ronskin of y1 and y2 never equals zero. So it's uh, pretty straightforward to check. Let's look at an example. The differential equation y double prime equals zero has solutions minus x and 3x. That's pretty easy to check. So let's calculate the Ronskin. The Ronskin of minus x and 3x is equal to the determinant of minus x 
three x. Those are the top column, top row. And then we take the derivative two, so the bottom row, minus one, and three. Since minus one is the derivative of minus x, and three is the derivative of three x, we calculate the matrix determinant, and we get minus x three minus three x minus one, which is minus three x plus three x equals zero. And this will be zero for all x. And we conclude that minus x and 3x are linearly dependent. And you can see that this is consistent with our other definition of linear dependence, because clearly 3x is minus 3 times x. So one solution is a constant multiple of the other. Right? So our definitions of linear dependence are, are consistent. Now let's look at two other solutions of the same differential equation. So y double prime x equals 0 also has solutions y1 x equals 2 and y2 x equals 5x. And let's take the Ron skin of that and see what happens. So the Ron skin of 2 and 5x is equal to the determinant Again, we take the two solutions in the top row. The derivative of 2 is 0, so we have 0 over here. The derivative of 5x is 5. So we take that determinant, which is just going to be um, 2 times 5 minus 5x times 0, which is 10. And 10 is, of course, never 0. And we conclude that 2 and 5x are linearly independent. And this means that the general solution for y double prime x equals 0 can be written down as y equals c1 times 2 plus c2 times 5x is the general solution to this differential equation. I feel bad for not being able to tell you why this weird Ronskin matrix is important and wh or why it works to solve this differential equation. But unfortunately, you need to know some linear algebra to understand why it's useful here. I know some of you have taken linear algebra before and some of you haven't. So I'm, I'm going to produce another video explaining the Ronskin matrix in a bit more detail. I strongly encourage those of you who are taking linear algebra now or have taken it in the, in the past to watch that video. It's not very difficult and it will give you a better understanding of why this run skin is useful in calculating the general solution.